So creating community-specific collections in Durham, that's what we did. So just to give a feel for what, what had we before we created these new collections. Um, so we have these sort of studio collections that were created because of the nature of how you deposit in Durham. So you choose a particular subject under the MP or HE brackets and, and then a particular we got you look drawer these became collections but they were never quite created in that way. Um, and we also had resource as well which is um, something we deliver for Scotland's colleges sector. So those those were the three pre existing ones. And the new ones that we have created and want to talk about today are one for research data management training materials and information and digital literacy skills. So I'm just going to talk about why we created these and how we went about it and to some results and then a bit of a future boost time thinking about what we might be doing. So firstly, why research data management? Somewhat niche in the OER world. Well, we, Joram was um, our participant in a DISC-funded um, DELC AVC project. I won't even bother explaining all that in this discussion. I can't remember, but it was part of a, a much wider managing research data in our day, I guess. Um, program that just ran um, up until last year. Um, so we were tasked to do those two things. So create a classification scheme um, for the resources and then also deliver a sustainable portal. So I very much put that in inverted commas because when we agreed to participate, um, this was all before my time, we didn't quite know what the portal would be. Um, it was mooted that it might be this sort of window which we've actually developed for the University of Leeds. And Antonio's about there. I think it was Antonio's idea. Yeah. <laughs> um, but because the windows were quite early stages then, we didn't know what they were going to involve, cost-wise, time-wise, and frankly there was no budget for what has now become our window offering. So we're like, well, what are we going to do to create this portal? So it was to come up with a collection of the thing. So how did we do it? Well, with the um, Dancy ABC project and, and, and team members, um, sorry, I forgot to mention that they, we were to showcase specific OER resources that were created by this 4DM trade project. Um, and with the Dancy group and those uh, OER creators, um, we sat down and tried to think about what way would you like to describe. So we worked with them to come up with the classification scheme. So we built on the existing classification team that Joram used and added these six. I say added, we think we drilled down from probably about 20 possible ways that you could describe 4DM resources. And the kind of push came from me to narrow it down because I knew already that, you know, from Joram's past it, it had a very heavy, um, intensive deposit process that we decided to drop. Um, so I wanted to keep the deposit process as lightweight as it, as it could be. So that was why I was anxious to keep them quite limited. But I think the six that we drill, drill down to are the most relevant. So subject, because, because we were taking it out of the FA and they were no longer going to have subject. So if there were subject specific, you could add that audience. So was it postgraduate researcher, was it a lecturer? Um, skills, um, again, totally specific to already other resources. Ability level was just intermediate. Uh, sorry, beginner, intermediate, advanced. Uh, delivery, that was about is it blended learning, is it one to one, is it, um, uh, is it a lecture, uh, that kind of thing, or is it classroom based or something, something like that. And then the range was was it interdisciplinary, was it inter institution, was it UK, was it international? So those, those were the sort of um, options that we came up with, and like I said, each of those had the control of the calendar we might have just suggested those terms. So that's the RDM. Um, so why information and digital literacy skills? Well again, we'll go back to RDM, but the, re the, the basis still apply for that as well. There was no suitable place to put those resources in FA or HE because you know they, they cut across all of those subject matters. Um, and this was really true for the for the information literacy uh, resources. And there was actually this conference last year when I met the co-pilot group, who I think are presenting somewhere next door possibly. Um, and it was good to meet with them because they ended up helping me build this collection. Um, and it was to improve discoverability and description um, of the resources. So again, I did, I basically reused, see what I did there, 
reuse what we did for the Dumpsey project. So I took those same six scripted fields, sent out a survey monkey to the IL OER discussed this and said, can you comment? Are these fields useful? Um, are these controlled vocabularies useful? Now, I was quick and dirty. I didn't want to put too much effort into it. I wanted to put it out there and for them to feed back. So no surprise. Um, I wasn't that surprised, but um, the fields worked fine, um, but they, obviously the control vocabularies needed to alter mostly the audience and the skills. The audience just needed widening up, because um, obviously librarians teach sixth formers, they teach adults who just walking up the street and who are already registered in academia, so they had a much wider audience, but obviously skills. Um, and I knew this is what the, I was going to get fed back. Um, I should have put Scott on the capsules there, I'm not taking um, so we, I basically tried to amalgamate the Scunnel Seven Pillars um, of Information Literacy into sort of skill types as to what an information literacy OER might be trying to teach somebody. Um, so I spent quite an age doing that and then I put that back to it was, um, specifically Jane Secker and Nancy Gray I wanted, of the co-pilot group saying how did these read to you because I was never an information literacy librarian in my former life. Um, so I was on the sidelines of quite scum. Um, and then at the last minute James just said, should we incorporate digital literacy skills or are you going to build another collection for that? And I was like, I don't know if they're going to be big enough to warrant its own collection. So I went back and luckily there was an equivalent scum on seven pillars for digital literacy. So I kind of merged them and then we ended up with the information and digital literacy skills collection. Bit of a mouthful but it's useful. So what were the results of creating this content? It was to be a discovery tool. Um, so we launched the ODM resources last August, or sorry, the ODM collection, and with approximately 23 existing resources. Um, as of April, it's only gone to 33. Now that's partly my fault. Um, shall I explain in a moment? We launched the Information Digital Literacy Skills Collection last November with approximately 50, so I just moved existing resources out of the sort of FA or HA classifications into this collection. But as of April this year, that collection is now over 100 resources. So that's 50 completely new resources in that collection. Um, so I have a little bit more time to do that for the IR because um, early September we launched a new door and I had to sort of just leave the ODM stuff. So I am going to go back and see what others I can, I can put into the ODM from existing content. So was it worth it? Um, I think so, yes. Um, not least of all because of the, the extra 50 resources that we now have, so stolen in size. Um, so before, if you were to search for information literacy, say, um, you would have to put that into the search box um, and sort of then filter your way through that now. But literally all you have to do now is click that one little filter and you just get the um, 180 resources. Um, and then just look at usage. So I, I haven't obviously really examined any possible cause and direct effect, but you can say that from so the IL collection was launched last November, and there is a nice little growth there in. So that's the views of the blue bars, and the downloads um, is the red bars above them. So it, it, there is a growth. Um, and I'm interested to see it through the year when that sort of um, peaks and drops, like maybe start of the year, and um, the information literacy teaching is like at its height, um, late August, early September. Okay, so that's those elections, but what about the future? Um, so I think because of that success, because of the discoverability um, of them, we have already been planning to create some more resources, uh, so theme collections, again with some pre-existing resources and with some other resources. So, We've sourced some content that's external. Um, we're still waiting to hear from the HEA um, about the forensic science, so we're going to hopefully create a collection for them. Um, and again, that last one, interprofessional education. And again, this is this is a good example of the theme collection because it cuts across a lot of different disciplines within the very broad health and social <laughs> social care um, teachers and, and subjects. And I'm just going to show you a bit of an exclusive look at the potentially new Jordan home page which we're going to launch in a, uh, in a couple of months hopefully at the, at the outside. So this is how we are envisaging how these will be displayed um, 
in the future, and again, making content more discoverable by having content on the homepage so you can immediately link to it, you don't even have to search for it. Um, so we haven't quite built these yet, but that's where you link to the theme collections, and, and then we'll have a, a more browse by subject um, possibility there as well. Any feedback, please welcome. This is a work in progress. This is just a mock up view of what we're thinking at the moment. That's all for me. Questions or comments? Slightly over there, sorry. That's fine. Yeah. Any questions? I was just going to mention that it um, looks great. I don't know, I just, when you were talking about the short history, I don't know if you've seen the, um, the Will Richard C. roadmap. Seen the what, sorry? The Will Richard C. roadmap. Uh, so, I've been together with Zilla, that was what we were meant for a long time. But it's a sort of a way of uh, kind of breaking down digital skills and literacy, um, and it's a ongoing project. So. But it might be something to check out and be interesting to yeah. do Thank you. Well, I know it was interesting because I read um, Tony Coughlin's article on the way up here, and again, it, you, you put skills that sort of generic in, in the center of this new content, and you know, it very much rings true that we needed that collection because it does sit outward of, of HG and FA and again with Leeds as well you have your academic skills collection yeah. of resources which sit by the side of the sort of the Jack's categorization of yeah. sort of PhD subjects so it is definitely needed and um, yeah and anyone it's, it's, a, it's a growing area of interest I think. Yes. Just in general um are you seeing many non-UK contributions coming into Joram? Do they have to be UK? Uh, it's, our, it's the only login that you have to Joram is that you are a member of UK or UK, a right institution. But we have had international resources. Quite recently we had some of uh, some Irish universities deposit in that IL collection. And they've done this really well. They, We've had to, I did a, a blog post about it, where somebody has taken that and reused and repurposed a resource and really built on it and then reshared it in Jordan. And actually, we've got our first um, foreign language resource as well in yeah. Irish, which I'm happy to say. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we're definitely um, seriously giving consideration to opening up our uh, users to international because our, if you look at if you, use, if you go to the stats tab, you can see we've got like a nice map the world, Google Analytics style, yes. and our usage is massive in the US and all over the world today. Yeah. And again, go back to the things that Tony was talking about yesterday. I think we need to look outside of even academia for regarding the US. So we need to think about how can we do that but still ensure quality. Because we do lock it down to those institutions in the UK, partly because we're just funding service that so we have to serve them. But also that's kind of our quality assurance at the moment, is the fact that you're, well if you're affiliated with an institution then you must be doing something right, is our assumption. Um, but yeah, I think we definitely need to consider opening it up 